In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add a column to show the file name of your uh, data source, especially if you only have a single data source that is not coming from a folder. So I'm going to show you three ways of doing that. So just to confirm, this um, file name here and this data is coming from an Excel workbook. It's not coming from a folder, unlike the other one that I have in here, which is a progress table this is coming from a folder wherein you can already see the file name automatically load up when you import or connect your um, query editor to a folder so these are the the files in that combined uh, progress table okay let's begin all right first method so i have a Power BI here without anything in there, no data at all. So we're going to import the Excel workbook that we're going to be using as a sample. So that will be coming from this directory. This is the file. It's uh, connecting to that file. So so there are two things here. So basically they're the same one is um, with the respect to the table name. The other one is with respect to the um shit name or shit number so i'm going to pick the table one and transform it okay so simple table um here with three columns and a couple of items five items in there no file name at all so this is a file um source from an excel not a folder so here you don't see any uh, file name so the method one is basically a straightforward approach we're in we're gonna add the the file name from the source the excel file itself so i'm gonna try to open the excel so this is the uh, excel uh, data source so what we're gonna be doing is just add a column for the file name and let's name that one as method one so we're gonna be using a nested formula and it's gonna center on this formula cell um file name okay just gonna show you what it looks like when we pull this formula out so that's basically the what comes out when you use that cell add file name uh, formula so this is our um the file name that we're after the fruit list that xlsx so we're gonna be doing a nested formula to extract that so we will try to i'm just gonna copy this cell file name and we will try to get the um mid it's the formula mid and text is going to be coming from that so file name starts from um we'll try to find the square bracket press the square bracket so find the square bracket um square bracket within text it's going to be the same thing here so file name and starts from the very first uh, character okay and number of characters mm. so we're gonna be finding the um the other um the closure square bracket so we're gonna be doing the same thing finding the um the square bracket okay within within the text so file name um start we're gonna be beginning from the first one and we will subtract that with the other opening bracket try to find that um the opening bracket within again the cell file name and let's begin from the first character okay i think we're ready did i miss any bracket enter there okay so we have the fruit a list but we still have the, the the bracket there so we need to add the character here start from an additional one character and we have to subtract another character there and that's the file name so delete this one and then go back to our query editor i have to close the excel by the way so that we can refresh it um refresh and there straightforward approach as our method one 
Okay, let's now move on to method two. So method two works best when you don't want to alter the data source to Excel itself and you just want to modify everything in the query editor. What I mean by that, so I'm gonna pull the Excel out again. So you, did, you, you don't want to, to add additional column in your uh, uh, data source. You just want to maintain how it how it is and changes will happen in the uh, query editor. So let's try to do that. But for, for this exercise, we'll just leave method one. We may need this to compare later on um, the different methods. Okay, let's close this. Uh, don't save. Okay, method two. So I'm gonna add a column, a custom column, and we'll call it method two. Method two. We will try to use the formula folder. Um, files and then we need the path as text so we're going to be copying the location of our Excel uh, data source so it's coming from here and we need to use the double quotation because it's a text and we need to um, use the um, property sorry it should be closure uh, parenthesis or bracket I should we need to use the property name and okay so we come up with a list all we need to do here is just expand this um this rows so same thing so we have the file name as an additional co column but this one we didn't take it from or we didn't modify the excel file but we did the modification in the query editor okay we are down to our last method method three this method works best when you don't want to alter the, the data source which was on method one and you don't want to work in the query editor later on when there are changes in say the file path meaning you want to make it more dynamic but with that method we need to create another another um data, data source and so I have created that extra data source, which is uh, in Excel, and it's called a uh, path list. So that path list Excel looks like this, wherein we just need to pull the information about the path, file path of our um, data source. So I'm gonna go back to our query editor. And this one, uh, I can get it from here. This is the, the location of this file. I'm gonna copy it, okay place that one in the cell for the file path save and close so we're going to be adding into our query an additional source coming from that excel file path so new source workbook that is that file and it should contain only two columns and two rows um it's going to be a table for that one okay simple um simple uh, directory I guess of the files that you use as data for your uh, Power BI so I'm just have to click on this cell and right click and use the drill down function to make it a sort of a parameter say um, I'm gonna name, rename this as dynamic dynamic path okay so uh, let's go back to our data source so um, basically it's the same the same as method 2 but with the dynamic mm -hmm. approach that we're going to be utilizing in method 3 so we're going to be adding a column and a column mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to be using the uh, dynamic dynamic path Okay, so there's a firewall, something like this error. Normally it happens when you haven't set up the privacy. So uh, I'll need to exit from here and configure the privacy. Okay, let's close that. We'll try to fix that. We'll go to the file, um, options and settings, options for this, for this current file. We're gonna be setting the privacy to ignore the privacy levels. And let's go back to our query editor. Um, I think it's working. Okay, it worked. Um, all we need to do now is um, let me just try to 
fix this. I didn't name it correctly. Make it method three. And expand the list as a expand the list as an addition to the rows. So we have all the three methods here with their values the same as expected. Now let's put them to the test and create a scenario where in there's a change in the file path. I'm gonna close this, apply and close. I'm gonna create a simple table with the fruit method one result, method two result, and method three result. Okay, everything is okay. So what if there's a change in the file path? Say this one becomes files from file to files now like what i've said in method three you don't want to do the changes in the um, query editor changes you made to the path will be updated here so i'm gonna update this one this is supposed to work for method three close that one so i made a change in the file path so from data file to data files let's refresh that and let's see what it does to our power bi so there's a problem here so you see it's uh, looking for a data file now we have files so let's try to find out where that error is coming from by opening the query editor in the query editor source let me just refresh it okay so the error starts from the source so because the source is looking for a data file again we have already data file so let's try to make this dynamic also the source so we can find out which of the methods um, work works best given the situation of the changes in the file path. So I will try to make it dynamic. We're changing up to here, the one that we created, the dynamic file path, and adding the, uh, uh, the file name. Done. Let's go back to the source. So it's okay. We're back. And navigation. Okay, method one is okay is working method one is method two there's a problem with method two okay so let's try to fix method two temporarily so that we can see whether we need to do some changes in method three so, okay so all good so we made the um, source as dynamic uh, value so again, let's let's test which one will react if we change the file path. So I'm gonna go back to the file path, uh, make this ending double S, and again for method three, if you make the change in the file path, all you need to do without working inside the query editor is change the file path directory in the separate Excel uh, data source. Okay, so we made that for method three, and again earlier when we refreshed because also the source was dynamic so everything was impacted but this time around the source is um, dynamic so we'll figure out which one will be impacted by the change in the source okay so let's find out where is it coming from source is fine method one is okay as well method two is the problem because in method two he are still left with a dynamic or static um, location of the file so that is something that if we delete that one and method 3 is still okay just remove the method 2 method 1 and 3 they are working just fine okay let's 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 put another test we're left with the two methods Let's change again the file to triple S. And again, for method 3, you don't want to work inside the query editor. Make the changes in a separate Excel file. Refresh. Both of them are perfectly okay. But the difference between these two methods is for method 1, you have to do the modification in the um, Excel data source, wherein we added a column. Method 3, the data, the data source um, is left unchanged, except that for to get to the path of the file, we had to create a separate data source from an Excel. By doing that, we don't need to modify the data source, and we don't need to go inside 
the query editor should there be changes in the um, by location. And at the same time, uh, by the way, we made the uh, the data source dynamic also. So if there's a change in the path, it also reacts to that new location of the data source. So yeah, that ends my video and I hope you took something from here and learned something new today. Bye.